It's the 21st EY Entrepreneur of the Year, the awards show that delves deep into the leading entrepreneurs from across the country, exploring the inner workings of the finest minds in business. 24 trailblazing innovators of commerce have been chosen across three categories, emerging, industry and international, but there can only be one winner, to be decided at the Grand Awards Ceremony on October 25th. So let's meet the remaining 2018 finalists. Last but by no means least in this three-part series is our finalists from the international category. This category consists of entrepreneurs who are global players, operating in multiple markets across the globe. The select eight were asked to nominate someone who has proven to be an inspiration or guiding light to their career. Someone who has been there from the beginning and helped the finalists on their journey to success. These select mentors have experienced the good and bad times and are now here to support the finalists in telling their story and why they should be the 2018 EY Entrepreneur of the Year winner. Some say that teamwork makes the dream work. Well, this couldn't be more apt for Peter Coppinger and Daniel Mackey, who founded Teamwork.com together in 2007. Once sworn enemies, the duo are now the best of pals. They're joined by mentor Fergal Gloucester. So Teamwork.com started as a project management software that was more effective than everything else that was in the marketplace. And it did very well. And over time, our vision for where our company could go changed. We decided that we could build a suite of products that would integrate together tightly to run your entire company. So I hated him when I first met him, but um, when I met him in college, he was the first guy I ever met that had the same kind of ambition to build a big software company and a bit of get up and go. I kept hearing that this guy, Peter Coppinger, was out selling websites as well. And when you're in college, we were doing websites for bars and stuff, and we'd, we'd cross each other's paths that way. Fergus has just been a whirlwind of support and information, and he has helped with manners on us and provided wisdom and a great structure. In all honesty, when you can see the rapid growth, you know, you know they're going to be successful. These, these two guys are going to be successful. They're good fun, they're very driven, they're ambitious, and it's humbling to be nominated by them and to be involved with them in their success. Dan and I own the company outright. Uh, it means we can be masters of our own destiny. We started 20 years ago as a consultancy, and um, we got to a point where we wanted to scale the business up. Uh, we needed something to manage the projects that we were working on. So we developed our own solution. Uh, we developed a flexible solution that any business could use, and we grew it from there. Yeah, so our ambitions for teamwork is to be a leader in the category of business operating system software. It's great as well to see when a product gets in somewhere like eBay, and then a subsidiary company or sister company like PayPal would also use it then, you know. So there are some big names like, like that, and they're brands that we grow and we admire, and it's great now to see them using our products, you know. First it was Cavan, now it's the rest of the world for Ray Cole and his family-owned company, Virginia International Logistics. Ray means business and has an army of 120 trucks and 400 trailers in the company. He's joined by company general manager, Ken Sharman. Virginia International Logistics is a family-owned business operating 120 trucks and 400 trailers from sites in Virginia, Kells, Dublin and the UK. The ethos of the company would be hard work and very customer focused. Uh, the customer is always king in our, our business. Ray brings enthusiasm, honesty and hard work to the company. I think the one thing with Ray is what you see is what you get. Uh, he'll take on a job. It's done to the best of the ability. Probably a game changer for us in, in Virginia last year this was uh, embracing technology and being able to bring in new technology that were able to monitor where the trucks were, monitor their diesel consumption, the driver's behaviour. Virginia International Logistics is very into its, its, its green environmental friendly. In 2015, we won the Environment Holly of the Year. In, at the minute, 2018, we're National and International Holly of the Year. Uh, a brother of mine has been working tirelessly on 
bringing in gas trucks into Ireland and we've just launched our first gas truck uh, this week with a new station as well in our Dublin yard. I go back to my first meeting with Ray 25 years ago in the Fort Cabin um, and where the company was then with the, the three of us and the few trucks that you had to where you've brought the company now with your drive and they again honesty. Uh, success in the future would be growing the business. We have a staff of 180 at the moment. We hope to, in January next year, we'll be up to 200 staff. Uh, we hope to op open up another depot in the UK and we're looking at opening up another depot then in Belgium so we can service the rest of Europe. Next, we're heading to Belfast to meet Peter Keeling of Diaceutics. Peter founded the company in 2005 as a better way to get patients tested more effectively. He's joined by mentor and pal and colleague, Dr. Patrick Considine. Diastrodic started really as a concept of if we could get the pharmaceutical industry much more re-interested in how they would invest and shape diagnostic markets. Diastrodics is in business which we call better testing. Particularly we're working with the pharmaceutical industry to try and improve the way patients are getting tested in advance of getting the treatment. Pat has been my mentor and partner. We met actually through a mutual friend. The mutual friend basically said, you two should meet, meet each other, because he knew that Pat carried all the scientific skills that I needed, and I think he felt that I had the commercial skills that Pat needed. Pharmaceutical companies decided to get rid of their diagnostic expertise and facilities. We were faced with a dilemma, how do we get them to come back? And I think this is one of the skill sets that Peter brings is he can bring change, he can bring new thinking, and not alone can he bring it, but he can sell it to the audience. He trusted my scientific, technical skills, I trusted his commercialization and marketing. In essence, what we're trying to do is to change testing at a disease level. So for example, in lung cancer, typically patients would take three years to get a proper lung diagnosis and get onto the right treatment. In Alzheimer's, it could be anything up to seven years. And what we are attempting to do at Diastetics is look at that entire system and say, here's a better way of getting these patients tested. To bring evidence to them to show that what they're doing is harmful to patients or it's damaging to, uh, to testing. We know a lot about that going on in, in Ireland at the minute. Today, we're 80 people and I fully expect we'll you know, be 100 pretty soon. Um, we're in 17 jurisdictions across the globe. And then underpinning that, we have used a combination of a lab, a global lab network, where we're really implementing a difference. We're making a difference. We're not just advising people how to do this. We're actually changing testing on the ground. Major Equipment International Limited are designers and manufacturers of agricultural machinery. The company is run by sisters Anya Lecky and Evelyn Murphy, and they're joined by their father, John, who founded the business over 40 years ago. Major Equipment are designers and manufacturers of a range of machinery. We do grass cutting machinery for amenity and agricultural applications. We do tankers for agricultural and industrial applications. Major Equipment is manufacturing site is based here in Ballyhonas. We also have a distribution depot in Heesham in the UK and also one in the Netherlands. We also export to over 20 countries worldwide. I think we're very privileged that you know, we have an opportunity uh, to work with our father and also learn from him over the last couple of years. It's not an opportunity that everybody is given and it is something definitely that I'm very, very proud of. We were on holidays in Wales when we, I was about maybe eight or nine and my dad stopped the car in the middle of nowhere and we all got out and climbed a gate and we looked in the field and there was like this green top we're working and I remember looking up at his face and just, I got it then, Do you know, he was just so proud and I get that now too. Traditionally this is a male dominated industry but that is changing and in my view changing for the better. I think the biggest thing and for our company is product development. Like even in the, the worst of times in 2008, 2009, we constantly invested in the R&D department and I suppose then we're in a position now where we have new products, we're in a really strong position for exporting because we have products ready to go. 
We both come from different backgrounds. I use accountancy and I would be more marketing. But I think we complement each other because um, you know, I would be maybe a little bit more creative and she watches the numbers. But just, you know, we've, we've a good relationship and then our brother as well brings another dynamic to it. So between the three of us and our dad, you know, um, I think we all bring kind of unique skills to the table. So it just makes us a bit a good team. I was very proud when I heard my daughters were nominated for the Entrepreneurs of the Year. 23 years ago, Mary McKenna sat in her sitting room with a team of three and established Tour America. Now it's Ireland's number one tour operator to the USA, Canada and Mexico. If that wasn't enough, she also set up Cruise Holidays, the country's leading cruise holiday agent. Mary is joined by Stephanie Frame, communications director of both companies. When I started first, uh, somebody said to me actually, uh, Mary, you don't make money for three years. And uh, we started our first year and we turned over um, a mi a three million pounds at the time. I started from my own sitting room and um, I had no money starting a business. And uh, there was a great opportunity to start Tour America, which is basically a company that sells holidays to the States for Irish people. The journey hasn't been the straight line, there's been plenty of low moments and some great high moments. What I like about uh, the way Mary does business is um, she doesn't believe in doing employee appraisals once a year. Mary believes in just having meetings when they're necessary. We had got to 43 staff uh, doing very well but what happened then uh, September the 11th and then lo and behold three months later I realised I had no business. The phones had stopped ringing and I had to take 11 of my staff and meet each one of them individually and say I'm really, really sorry, you're a great employee but I have to let you go and I actually bawled with every single one of them. And then I started to see cr cruise specials coming in and, and I really was kind of digging deep and I said let's start Cruise Holidays. Registered cruiseholidays.ie, rang the staff, took them all back and put them into Cruise Holidays. So the strategy that Stephanie puts behind makes sense. So we work very well. I will always pass something by Steph. Always say, what do you think? And, and always get feedback and change it around. If I think of the business where I am right now to where it's going to be, I want to ensure that the brand Tour American Cruise Holidays stand as a trusted brand. The consumer really says, this is a company that's different to every other travel company. Compliance and Risks was founded in 2002 by Damien McGovern. A year later, with the introduction of a Cork-based entrepreneur, Pat Lynch, the company developed the secret ingredient, leading to its huge success. The pair have been mentors to each other and are here to tell us more. Compliance and Risk, uh, we're a global um, organisation which now tracks and monitors all the regulations for electronic companies and their product going to market. I actually worked in Brussels. My job there was to tell customers what rules and regulations were coming down the tracks. There was a, a, a big problem in the gap between the production of regulations and their consumption by businesses. And I thought, hmm, I wonder how that could be greatly improved. And that's where the idea came from. Pat is a fundraiser par excellence. My job was to work on the product and get customers. Pat's job was raising finance for the company. I had been finance director of a large multinational here in, um, in Ireland and I knew if we had the product we would be able to use it. We're mentors to each other because uh, Damien has a legal background and understands the data and all the legal regulations and had a good understanding of software as well and how all that developed. And then my background was finance. My strengths were Damien's weaknesses and vice versa. I saw this man that walked into me with a vision as to where the company was going to go to and that most certainly has happened. We keep our customers alerted on a daily basis of the rules and regulations coming from pretty much every country in the world except North Korea. We are working for major, major multinational companies selling in every country in the world and they rely on us to keep them updated. Being able to anticipate what our customer needs, I see Damien having that ability to be five years ahead of where the world is at right at the moment. What kind of a company do we want to be? 
Are we only about making money or are we really genuinely trying to be a good corporate citizen? And that's important for compliance and risks. We are trying to do something that we believe is, is, is going to change the world for the better. Barry Napier is CEO of Cubic Telecom, the software designing company that's making serious noise in Dublin. Barry is joined by CCO of Cubic, Jerry McQuaid. So Cubic Telecom is a company based here in Sandyford and we design software to connect any type of device to the internet or to a mobile network so you can connect that device in real time anywhere around the world. So my background has always been in distribution uh, and I wanted to bring distribution to connectivity. I was looking at a company and I found a small company based in Cork called Cubic which had three or four people in there. And their solution wasn't really right, but the brand was pretty good at the time of what they were trying to do. And we took that brand and then we built it from there. I met Jerry when he was working with Dennis O'Brien and Barry Maloney and ESAT Telecom. And we were the distributor for their phones in their network. And he's been a big inspiration for me. Barry is um, a visionary. He's a big picture guy and he sees where he wants to bring uh, anything he's involved in. I think we've had two game changers uh, in Cubic Telecom. I think one is when we got uh, our first investment with Qualcomm back in 2011. That was a huge game changer because the biggest chip manufacturer in the world made an investment in an Irish tech company. I think the second game changer was when we solved Audi and Volkswagen's needs for connectivity. Success, I think, can be in many ways in the future. I think first people, when you talk about it, say, have you sold the company or do you want to exit? Exit or selling the company is not success for me. Success for me is connecting everything that we said we were going to connect. We're trying to take over the automotive connectivity business and pioneer that for here from Ireland. There's a lot of high tech here in Ireland and great people, and it's great that we're attracting that base and these brands here in Ireland. Barry is the right person for EY Entrepreneur of the Year because he, he's proven himself to be a leader that everybody um, is inspired by and wants, wants to follow. Tony Richardson became CEO of Venn Life Sciences in 2010 and in that same year completed two acquisitions that provide the basis for the current business. Good going for Tony, whose turnover in 2017 was 18.4 million. He's joined by colleague Frida Donnelly. We're a drug development uh, partner for companies who want to develop yeah, either drugs or medical devices. I'm in life science for 20 odd years, but I don't have a scientific background. So we've had to kind of build a team that has the right balance of skills on it. We are a people business, and that's Frida's background. In Van, our people are our business, so uh, our success is a direct result of their skills and expertise. In a small company, attracting the right talent can be challenging, but we pride ourselves in the fact that we have very low turnover and we have a great team of people. We started life very much as a kind of a project management uh, company. We've added uh, more kind of consulting and advisory into our business. So where we are globally, I'd say we're still kind of a very much operationally still very much a Western European business. So we've got people in Dublin, UK, Netherlands, France, Germany. We operationally cover adjacent countries to those countries. Um, but our clients come from everywhere. The growth has been certainly in the first four or five years was kind of explosive. So we were doubling the business every year. Um, and uh, some of that was acquisition driven but I would say the more interesting aspects of it were organic. Success looks like completion of our original mission, which was to develop Venn as a full service, full coverage business in the European environment. So I mentioned a little earlier, right now, operationally we're quite focused. Our strengths, I would say, are in Western Europe. We'd like to expand that further into Central and Eastern Europe. Tony epitomizes um, an entrepreneur he has vision, sees opportunities, some of which others may not see. He's hugely resilient, he's calm, and he's not afraid of taking brave decisions. It'll be a tough decision for the judges, but for more on that, here's Kevin McLaughlin, EY Entrepreneur of the Year Partner Lead. So the EY Entrepreneur of the Year programme every year recognises 24 amazing finalists who are making great strides both nationally and internationally in the business world. 
quality this year is, is fantastic. Um, we've got great diversity, lots of different sectors, a really great group of people um, and a really great reflection I think of the strength of, of Irish business these days. There's no standout winners here. I think the judges have a really tough job uh, to pick a winner from a really great group of finalists. So that's it for our finalists in the international category, rounding up our three-part series on all of the finalists of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Remember, there can only be one overall winner to be revealed on Thursday the 25th of October on RTE. Make sure to tune in.